Hello viewers, this is Dr. P. Mary Anupuma, faculty from the Department of Biochemistry, St. Joseph's College, Furman, Vishakapatnam. Today, let us study about automation in clinical laboratories. What is automation? Automation means getting work done by machines which can run on their own. This is without our continuous monitoring. So automation, it refers to machines with intelligence and adaptability which reduces our workload and need for non-stop supervision. What are the steps involved in analysis process? So these are as follows. First one is identifying the patient. Second, getting the correct sample. Third, identifying and proper labeling of the sample. Fourth is delivery of the sample in proper storage condition and within the time. Fifth is preparation of sample for test. Sixth is sample loading or aspirating. Seventh one is analysis. Eighth step is reporting. While the ninth step is entering the report in the register. Now, what are the benefits of automation? Automation, it reduces the workload. It increases turnaround time. That means it saves the time that we invest for analysis, for every analysis of the sample. It increases total number of tests that are done in less time. It eliminates repetition and monotony from human life. So decreases human error and improves accuracy. It improves reproducibility and it uses minimum amount of sample and reagents. Automation in clinical labs, it is with respect to the transport of specimens, processing of specimen, loading of specimen into auto analyzers and assessment of results of the performed task. Steps involved in automated sample analyzers. First is sample collection. In automated analysis, at times just a prick of finger is sufficient to collect the sample. As in the case of glucometer, a small prick is going to display the amount of blood glucose which is present. Next is automation in sample collection. It mainly re refers to improved faster and least discomfort causing techniques of collection. These include the robotic systems or the vacuum tainers. So here we have robotic systems which easily handle the sample and transport it while you have vacuum tainers which you can just apply and they take the sample. Blood collected using a vacuum tainer. Here the phlebotomists they need to just uh, not just put the, pull the syringe, but blood gets sucked due to the negative pressure filling the vacuum in these vacuum tainers. So we have different types of vacuum tainers for serum collection and for plasma collection using different types of anticoagulants. Identification is done with the color of the caps. Next step is sample identification by labeling and barcoding. Labs uh, generate a unique identity or the hospital number for each new patient like this. All samples collected, they have to bear the name, the details of the patient along with this unique identity hospital number. The same is used while entering the details into auto analyzer software and result is also published with this number and other details. So this is how barcoding is generated by feeding the name of the patient, the age of the patient, the details along with the hospital number they feed it and they are saved like this and sent for auto analysis. Some advanced labs they are using computer generated barcoding technology for labeling samples. This barcoding it avoids human errors. Barcoding of the patients um, unique sample identity is attached to his or her wrist. Even when the patient is sleeping or unconscious, 
the nurse can read the code of for the patient's identification barcoding of blood bag in hematology stores entire details of the type of the blood its components storage conditions time of storage etc just by one barcode next is sample delivery in previous methods human pickup system that was used and it is cheaper you know people just pick up the sample and transport it few advanced labs they use pneumatic tube systems these use uh, pressurized gas to move the tubes containing the samples highly advanced laboratories they use robots there is a robotic this is conveying robotic way of transport also where they pick up the tube and transfer it so all this is there next is sample preparation the automated sample processes are of two types we have stand alone automated sample processes and then independent automated sample processes this automated sample process do the following tasks first is sorting of the samples to remove the caps separating the samples barcoding all these things automated sample processor solves the task of barcoding and sample delivery via conveying belt system the automated sample processor decides whether the sample has to go to hematology or pathology lab or to the biochemistry lab or to the microbiology lab and so on and so forth the auto analyzers for the sample analysis they can be divided into two types we have open system as well as closed system first let us see open system the advantage is operator they can purchase the reagents of the auto analyzer at his own convenience this saves the money these auto analyzers they are assembled hence increases the flexibility of the machine according to the customer's demand for example we want to work with ion selective electrode so three electrodes can be built in and one can add the other or any one you know according to the convenience later on so due to the modular approach the facility is considered to be uh, quite convenient then closed system the operator here they have to buy mandatorily from the instrument manufacturer that is the only auto analyzer manufacturer so this can become little expensive due to the customization but the advantage that we get is it allows high degree of automation and just one person you know they are sufficient to manage all the works with this uh, closed auto analyzers so automated analyzers they are designated to function in two ways that is the modular system and integrated system coming to the modular system these are fitted according to use just like our modular kitchen what we want we can just fit it like that each component is fit separately so that it can be fit into different systems that is the advantage with this coming to the integrated systems machine is designed in such a way that each component is essential for functioning and the disadvantage is its maintenance is very high and the instrument is expensive but what is the advantage there is improved communication and improved data exchange between the softwares and the machine so one person can operate and finally give us the result in case of integrated systems which are the closed systems modular systems are the open systems based upon the processing again there are two types of auto analyzers of which the first one is continuous flow processing based on this principle a continuous flow analyzer cfa is made up of different modules so there is a continuous flow of solution and flow it's as follows first to the sample then the pump then the mixing coil heater and incubator then sample treatment chamber it goes there then signal detection readout device and then this provides one analysis per analyte for one sample at a time 
so just give one sample the sample flows like this and gives you the result just one analysis at one time that's it so in these analyzers the sample is injected into the sampler um, and then it goes with the flow of the solution the sample mixes with the diluents here and reagents and it is sent through tubings and mixing coils the tubings pass the samples from one apparatus to the other so there are different apparatus for different functioning like we have the ion exchange some heating some incubation and finally the recording of the signal and the output is generated here disadvantages in this system are even if there is uh, no test to be done the reagents are to be continuously drawn and we have to just keep the things flowing so this adds cost and maintenance of instrument it is required more frequently the probe and the internal tubings they must be free of any clogs or blocks and when there is no sample the probe must be dipped in distilled water to avoid blockage or precipitation so careful maintenance of probe is to be done and the machine itself it occupies large space and the second type of processing that we have is the discrete processing so each sample is provided a discrete space that means um, each analysis even for the same analyte or sample taken you know in different cups you can go ahead with that this is the main principle of discrete analysis okay each analysis even for the same analyte say for example i have taken one blood sample i want to analyze sodium potassium protons and so on and so forth so this is taken in different cups and then the analysis can be done at a time in this exact amount of sample and reagent is aspired and mixed so there is no uh, addition of excess reagents and uh, continuous uh, in the continuous flow processing excess of the reagents they have to flow so that becomes a financial investment as each analysis is done in different cups and read in different quids so there is no carry over effect at all advantages this is more useful it saves reagents cost and hence these are very popular and no sample carry over effects are there there just one sample at a time one sample at a time based on this principle again the auto analyzers developed are uh, into two different varieties like we have the centrifugal analyzers and random access analyzers centrifugal analyzer centrifugal force is used for transfer and mixing of samples and reagents and you have the optical system that allows sample analysis and batch wise analysis can be done and all the samples can be analyzed at once but the disadvantage is one sample is analyzed at a time for one variable now random access analyzer many tests can be done with one sample and the commands decide the test conducted on the sample and here it is fully automated fully automated this is the centrifugal auto analyzer where you can keep the samples and analysis is done they have optical systems for monitoring thank you for watching this video